I'm going to present Edwards in a panorama. My name is Chen Kun Zhang from the University of Hong Kong, and this is joint work with Zhi Yi Huang and Yu Hao Zhang. Let me first introduce the classical online bipartite matching model, which was first introduced by Kapp Vazirani and Vazirani in 1990. There is a bipartite graph G with offline and online vertices. Offline vertices are given upfront, while online vertices arrive one by one. When the first online vertex arrives, its adjacent edges are released, and then the algorithm will decide to match it to one of its neighbor immediately and irrevocably. The matched offline vertex can no longer be matched to other online vertices, so the second online vertex has only one choice. And then the same to the third one. At last, the fourth one has no longer available labor, so it is left unmatched. The benchmark is defined as the maximum matching size of the instance where all vertices are offline. So the compatibility ratio in this instance is three over four. We studied a generalization of online bipartite matching called AdWords, which was first introduced by Meta Sabri Vazirani and Vazirani 15 years later. The problem was driven by the online advertising platform the problem also gives the bipartite graph G with offline side, which represents the advertisers, and the online side to represent the impressions. Further, each edge AI is associated with a non-negative bead BAI, and each advertiser A has a positive budget BA, which upper bounds the payment of the advertiser. So uh, it, assigning a subset of impressions S to an advertiser leads to a budget active payment BAS. And finally, the objective is to ma maximize the total payment among all the vertices. I summarize some previous results here. The previous research are mostly under the small bit assumption where an advertiser's bid for any impression is much smaller than its budget. And an optimal 1 minus 1 over E competitive ratio is achieved for small bits. Subsequently, AdWords was studied under stochastic assumption. If impressions arri arrives in a random order, a 1 minus 1 over E competitive ratio can be achieved by a simple grid algorithm. And in a more restricted and known IID model, a 1 minus epsilon competitive algorithm was introduced for small bits. For the general bits case, there is a one minus one over E compatible result for the unknown IID model. However, little is known about the most general case of AdWords, that is with the general bits and without stochastic settings. So the most natural question is that can we beat the trivial 0 0.5 compatible ratio achieved by a simple greedy? Our paper answers the question on the positive end, and our main result is that we introduce a 0 0.5016 competitive online algorithm for AdWords. So to see the motivation of how to break the 0 0.5 barrier, let's say a simple grid algorithm for classical online bipartite matching, that is, uh, match each online vertex to an arbitrary unmatched offline neighbor. It is well known that this is 0 0.5 competitive. To break this bound, it is necessary to involve randomness. Let's consider a very simple randomized algorithm that is greedily picking, uh, greedily pick two best offline neighbor which have been tried the least and then match it to one of them with equal probability. And then with equal probability, the algorithm gives a matching size of one and two in the Z-graph instance. The first attempt to is to borrow the idea of involving randomness to the AdWords problem. Similarly, we consider a two choice gradient for AdWords. We mat uh, match each, of, uh, each impression to a pair of advertisers with equal probability. However, let's consider an impression which shortlists an advertiser A, and then the marginal distribution of all other impressions that shortlist A will decrease. The 
a challenge arises that it is complicated to measure these decreases. So our solution is to use a novel formulation for Edwards, which we call the panorama view. Recall that the budget additive payment in the original formulation is either the sum of its Bs for assigned impressions or its budget, whichever is smaller. That is, the algorithm assigns a set of impressions to advertisers until its budget is spent out. In our panorama view, each offline advertiser is associated with an interval whose length equals the budget. And the algorithm not only assigns each impression to an advertiser, but further a subset combination of the interval with total measure at most its bid. And further define the payment of an advertiser to be the measure of the union of subsets for the assigned impressions. Here's a simple instance for a deterministic algorithm. For the first impression with bid BA1, we, we may result loss of generation to assign it to the subset 0 to BA1, and then assign the second impression to the subset BA1 to BA1 plus BA2, and so forth. It's actually identical to the original formulation in a deterministic round, uh, algorithm, but the payment in the panorama view is actually a lower bound of the original payment. So when it comes to the randomized algorithm, the payment become different. Our algorithm is what we call an oblivious semi-randomized algorithm. The algorithm consists of a deterministic round and a randomized round. In the randomized round, each impression is a semi-assigned to two advertisers, that is, choose two subset combinations and assign the impression to one of them with equal probability. And then the decisions in both rounds, as well as the choices of the subset combinations are oblivious to the algorithm. So uh, here is an example to show how the two formulation behave in an oblivious semi-randomized algorithm. Let's consider an instance with two advertisers and three impressions. Each advertiser has a budget of two, and each impression is assigned to two advertisers with equal probability, with all bids equal to one. First, in the budget active payment, with probability one over four, all impressions are assigned to the same advertiser, and thus the objective is two and otherwise they are assigned to both advertisers, the objective is three. So the expected objective equals 11 over four. However, in the panorama view, the algorithm must further assign each impression to a, uh, to a subset of zero to two for both advertisers. It is without loss of generation to assign first impression to 0 to 1, and then the intervals 0 to 1 of both advertisers are assigned with probability 1 over 2. And then uh, this will con con contribute 1 to the objective. And further, it is reasonable to assign the second impression to 1 to 2 so that it is disjoint with the first one and contribute 1 to the objective. However, the third impression can only contribute one over two to the objective regardless of the choices of subsets because the entire interval zero to two has been semi-assigned once. So therefore, the expected objective is five over two. And then the next question is, is our, in our panoramic viewpoint with two choice greedy, it, is it enough to break 0 0.5? The answer is no. It is not difficult to prove that the two choice greedy is also 0 0.5 competitive for the classical online bipartite matching model. And then our solution is to 
uh, involve the negative correlations in different randomized rounds. Instead of using a fresh random B to select a shortlist advertisers, and for each impression, our algorithm selects one with negative correlation. Suppose that two impressions I1 and I2 both shortlist an advertiser A in a randomized round, and I1 comes before I2. Further, I1 and I2 are assigned to the subset combinations with overlap. The negative correlations means that if I1 does not select A, I2 is more likely to select A. This helps to get larger expected gains in the panorama view than just using the independent selections. So an algorithmic ingredient called online correlation selections, the OCS, by Fairbuck, Huang, and Tao, and Daddy Mogdan provides a quantitative control of such negative correlations. The OCS considers a set of ground elements and further a sequence of pairs of these elements arriving one at a time. The OCS ensures that if it is not chosen this time and it gets a hair chance next time. In the definition of gamma OCS, for any element which appears in K pairs, the probability that it is selected at least once in these pairs can be lower bounded, which is strictly larger than using a fresh random bit when k is greater than 2. Uh, the next question is that how to utilize the idea of OCS in the panorama view for AdWords. Before that, let me first introduce how to build up our algorithm. Our algorithm builds on the strength of a configuration linear program as a benchmark where we use a decision variable XCS to represent, uh, to represent the probability that any subset S of I are assigned to A. The change of the decision variables then lead to the change of the due constraints. We proceed to the online problem due framework on the configuration linear program to design and analyze the algorithm. Concretely, if we use P to represent the objective achieved by the algorithm and D to represent the upper bound of the offline optimal, and then an online algorithm is gamma competitive if the reverse weak duality holds, as well as the approximate due feasibility is satisfied. In the panorama view, we perform a point level bookkeeping we see that a point Y is assigned or semi-assigned if there is an impression I assigned or semi-assigned to A and the subset combination YAI containing Y in a deterministic or randomized round respectively. For randomized round, uh, round algorithm, define X and Y as the probability that Y is assigned. By doing so, we can compute the primal objective for a single advertiser as an integration from zero to its budget over each point. Similarly, we keep point level do variables alpha ay, and then the approximate do feasibility changes accordingly. Here is an instance to show how to do the panoramic assignments. The algorithm greedily assigns each impression starting from where the last subset combination ends with size equal to the bead. The subset combination of the first impression starts from zero, and then the second subset starts from where the first one ends. But the first layer cannot accommodate its bead. We put the rest to the second layer starting from zero. And then it comes to the third impression in a deterministic round. This subset is assigned deterministically and will no longer be assigned or semi assigned. For understanding, you may think of zero to BA as a circle by gluing its endpoints, and the algorithm scans along the circle to find the subset with its bead and has not, not yet been deterministically assigned. It is similarly to taking a panorama. 
Here we define the KAY as the number of times Y is semi-assigned for each point Y. And the KAY equals to infinity if Y is assigned in a deterministic round. Next, I will introduce our generalization of uh, OCS in a panorama view, which we call the pan OCS. Pan OCS correlates the random decisions in different rounds negatively. Here is a definition of gamma pan OCS. It takes a sequence of pairs of advertised subset combinations as input, and for each pair, select one. For any advertiser A and for any point Y, the probability that Y is assigned X A Y can be lower bounded. The intuition behind the inequality is best explained with a thought experiment. Recall that the KY is the number of times that Y is semi-assigned. And suppose that Y is negatively correlated with the last semi-assignment with gamma chance. And further, suppose that the k y minus one pairs of semi-assignments are negatively uh, dependent. And then let's consider y is not assigned. If none of the above events happens with probability one minus gamma to the power of k minus one, and and none of the k y independent selections pick a with probability two to the power of minus k y. Here we here are our results for the panel OCS. Suppose all the non-zero bits are large, we prove that there is a 0 0.05144 pan OCS. And for the general bits, suppose there are at most k max semi-assignments to any point y, there is a 0 0.01245 times 1 over k max pan OCS. Next, uh, I will uh, introduce our on online problem due algorithm based on all the previous ingredients. I will show a 0 0.5, triple 0, 0.5 competitive algorithm. The ratio is smaller than what we state in the main results, but yet beat 0 0.5 barrier. Recall that for any point y, the gamma OCS, a uh, gamma pan OCS gives a lower bound of probability that y is assigned. We denote this lower bound as x bar a y. Further, we define an invariant delta x to describe the increment of x bar a y as the number of semi assignments k a y increases. This is a lower bound of the primal increment for a single point in a randomized round. For the due uh, increments, we define another invariant, delta alpha, to measure the increment of the point level due variables alpha a y, such that alpha a y represents it is represented as the sum of all these increments in the all randomized rounds. Uh, and then define the delta beta as delta r x minus delta alpha such that we can easily compute the gain of beta i for each impression when it is uh, assigned or semi-assigned to an advertiser A. When i is semi-assigned to A and to the subset combination y a i, the number of times that each point in the subset is semi-assigned will, decre will be increased by one and when i is, is assigned to a deterministically, the number of ky changes to infinity by definition. And our algorithm is generally making deci decisions to maximize the gain of beta i. That is, for each impression, choose two advertisers and compute the sum of gain from both semi-assignments, or choose one advertiser and compute the gain from the deterministic assignments. Finally, make decisions according to whichever is larger. By the two invariants, we, the uh, reverse weak duality holds by definition. It leaves you consider the approximate dufitability. We then derive a set of conditions on the parameters to ensure that. And finally, optimize the compatibility ratio by solving a linear program.
Now I will show how to derive these conditions, fix a, an advertiser A, and consider how the uh, neighbor impression I is assigned. Basically, there are four possible situations based on whether it is a deterministic or randomized round, or whether I is assigned or semi-assigned to A. Let's consider the final status of A. The first case is that I is not assigned to A, but semi-assigned to two other advertisers. Each of these two assignments, uh, semi-assignments, gain at least the gain, assuming that I is semi-assigned to A. So we charge the gain to this subset combination, and for any points in that we get a point level condition for this case. The first term is the accumulated gain from the alpha in k randomized rounds, and the second term is double the gain uh, from beta i, assuming that i is semi-assigned to a. The second case is that i is not assigned to a, but assigned to another advertiser deterministically. We introduce an additional condition to reduce this case to the last one, which we call the superiority of the randomized round. That is, for any advertiser and any impression, two times the gain in a randomized round is greater than the gain in a deterministic round. By doing so, the lower bound of the gain from beta i in, is the same as the previous case. And similarly, we charge the gain to the subset and derive the same condition to, uh, on each point. In the case three, i is semi-assigned to a and contributes at least the gain, assuming that i is deterministically assigned to a when i is semi-assigned to it. The worst case is that assuming i is semi-assigned to a at the very last among all the impressions semi-assigned to it. So we charge the gain to this subset, and for any point in this subset, we derive another, con another point-wise condition the first term in the, uh, in the condition is also the cumulative gain from alpha, and the second term is that the point-wise gain from beta i, assuming i is deterministically assigned to a. Note that because i is semi-assigned to a, in this case, the sum of gain starts from k instead of k plus 1. The last case is that i is semi-assigned to a, or a is sem i is assigned to a deterministically. In this case, gain from alpha a could be sufficient, and beta i has no non-trivial lower bound. So for any point that is deterministically assigned, we get the last point-wise condition. Subject to these conditions, we solve a linear program to maximize gamma and get a compatible ratio of 0 0.5, triple 0 0.5 for general bits, where there is a 0 0.01245 times 1 over k max panel CS. To get our final result, we propose a hybrid algorithm combining the strength of basic algorithm for the large bits and uh, the strength of the algorithm by Meta, Sabri, Vazirani, and Vazirani for small bits. So at the very last, I give a brief summary of our result. Our algorithm result is a 0 0.5016 compatible algorithm for the adverse with general bits and without small uh, stochastic assumptions. And this is the first algorithm beating the trivial greedy and the 0 0.5 barrier. For the techniques, we propose a novel panorama view for formulating adverts. This allows a fine-grained characterization on how the assignment of an impression to an advertiser affects the marginal gains of the other impressions assigned to it. And then we generalize the OCS in our panorama view as a pan OCS, it gives a quantitative control of the negative correlations in different randomized rounds. 
that's all on my presentation. Thank you.